I'm Dan Rose, this is St. Rose, and these are your morning announcements. On this morning's show, we have your morning prayer, the daily announcements, our Pledge of Allegiance, and more on this edition for St. Rose Live for February 1st, 2018. Today's schedule is reversed. It's now time for morning prayer. Put yourself in the presence of God, clear your mind, open your heart, and please stand by for this morning prayer. Audio Jungle. As we continue our celebration of Catholic Schools Week, let us stand and together give thanks for the gift of Catholic education in our own lives as we pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty Father, you sent forth your Son as a beacon of hope for all people. As a teacher, he has given us the prime example of the importance of education. As disciples, we look to him for inspiration and strength. Thank you for the many sisters, brothers, priests, and lay people who have dedicated their lives to service to our Catholic schools. And thank you for the teachers and administrators who sustain our schools today. Thank you for the parents who have given support and witness to the importance of Catholic education in their daily lives. Thank you for the students who work hard to further their education. Bless St. Rose High School and the many people who advance our mission. May our building be a home for those who seek to grow in faith, knowledge, and service to others. May our community always support one another and exhibit hospitality to newcomers. Fill our minds with knowledge and wisdom that our understanding of the world helps us to grow in appreciation for it. Fill our hearts with gladness and we may always turn to you in times of need. Fill our hands with the tools we need to serve others that we may show them our your unceasing, unceasing love through our actions. St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, pray, pray for us. us. St. John Newman, pray for pray us. St. Rosalima, pray, pray for, for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, St. Rose. Today is Thursday, February 1st, 2018, and today's schedule is reverse. Here are today's daily announcements. Lit Mag meetings uh, are going to be held every Thursday after school in, re in room 301. If you cannot make it a Thursday meeting, please stop by during your lunch period. Periods 4 and 6 in room 301 and period 5 in 302. Be sure to join our Schoology group and see Mrs. Carlos with any questions. Um, submission should be sent to Mrs. Carlos's email. Um, yeah. The St. Rose National Honor Society is running a blood drive on Friday, February 23rd. Please see Mr. Perino in room 605 or an NHS officer for more information or to sign up to donate. Students must be 16 years older and weigh at least 120 pounds. Yep. If anyone interested in helping out stage crew for this year's production of Beauty and the Beast uh, with Mr. Alpiard in room 203 after school on Monday, February 5th. If you can't make it, send him a message on Schoology. The pliable challenge is officially over. Here are the current standings. Wall, 319. St. Rose, 556. Wow, Alec, that is a lot. Yep. Um, and Manasquan with a poor 34. <laughs> well, it looks like we won that one. Kudos to Mrs. Coakley for thinking of the idea of having students order bowls and pay for them in school. It really helped us win over Wall. And kudos to all the St. Rose students who kept it classy on Instagram when Wall students tried to get the best of us. Thank you for standing up for yourself and your school and for doing it in an appropriate way. Attention seniors who have been on Kairos retreat, please see Miss uh, Sister Kathleen in the chapel now. Again, seniors who have been on Kairos are to meet Sister Kathleen in the chapel now. 
And those are your daily announcements. If you missed any of today's announcements, you can check the monitors in the hallway or in the cafeteria, or just log on to St. Rose's website and rewatch your show. It's now time for today's daily 10 trivia questions of the day. See if you and your classmates can answer today's trivia question. 10 second trivia. Which of these seasons typically coincides with fall and winter in the U.S.? Baseball season, hurricane season, flu season, or carnival season? The only one of these seasons that starts in the fall and continues through winter is the flu season. In January, a group of students from St. Rose High School joined hundreds of others from the Diocese of Trenton for the Rally for Life in Trenton, followed by a mass with the bishop. The Diocese of Trenton's TV crew was on site and videotaped the event, and we had the portions which feature St. Rose staff, students, parents, and friends. Take a look. The seminary brought us to the March for Life, and I loved it. And when I became a priest, I wanted to keep coming and showing the community how beautiful we is to be here, how we rejoice in the gift of life. So when I decided to go last year, I wasn't so sure about coming, but when I came, I had the best time ever, and I wanted to do it again and experience the same feeling. And I think that coming here is a good experience to learn about why you're supporting what you're supporting, and I think it could really change people's opinions if they would give it a try. Sometimes we can feel like loners out there in our parishes and our communities being pro-life but coming here you really see the support that we have not only from these hundreds of thousands of people but from the priests the nuns um, other religious groups other even um, non-religious groups that are here all supporting human dignity and the right to life it's important I think for us to come together and it's a witness to the world there were hundreds of people from other countries here including lawmakers uh, and they get inspired in the March for Life concept uh, pioneered here, first by Nellie Gray in 74, has gone all over the world. In the past couple months, we had uh, some losses of suicide in our school, and it made me really think about life and just made me value life so much more. And, you know, I realized the Respect Life movement is not just about babies, but it's about, you know, suicide prevention, and it's about the lives of elderly and just all lives in general. So showing my support out here is kind of just a first step in the right direction. I started the pro-life club at my school called Celebrating Life Club, and it encompasses all aspects of life through every stage and every age. And reaching out to the students through uh, social media, through my school, um, different events at my school, like even the blood drive. We helped out at the blood drive. Just different things like that. I think, you know, whatever we can do is going to help, and that's what counts. I think the millennials more and more, because the polling shows they are far more pro-life than their parents. Um, you know, they've grown up in a world with, with uh, ultrasound. Uh, they know or have heard of post-abortive women and the agony that so many, not all perhaps, but so many carry with them. There's a lot of signs that said, you know, I am the next generation of pro-life, and you know, that's something that struck us a lot, too. If you have the right amount of support, I think you can do what's right, and even if you can't keep the baby, there's other options like adoption. I think that knowledge is power, and we have a generation of young people who are more educated than many, many in the past, and, and more interested, to be honest with you. Um, we all want freedom, we all want to maintain our rights, but no one's right just supersede that of the other. We have passed a lot of laws. At the state level, there's about 300 since 2010. All of them saving lives, all the funding bans, none of it happens without prayer and the people like those who are in this room. It just doesn't happen. I just want to thank Bishop O'Connell for su always supporting our pro-life efforts. Thank you to all the many priests and religious and parishioners, friends, and, and the bus captains, the many bus captains from around our diocese who have worked so hard to make this happen for so many people. So way to go. My sisters and brothers, we join together on this sober day this day in which we commemorate, not celebrate, but commemorate uh, the tragic decision of Roe v. Wade. Today, the anniversary of that wrong-headed judicial pronouncement is a day that is tinged with sorrow and regret. It's an example of the fact that what is legal is not always moral and right. The silent voices of over 53 million souls in the United States make that case 
for us. And we call them to mind today. My brothers and sisters, the State House in Trenton is much closer than Washington, D.C. But both marches, both rallies, that on Friday and that today, are part of one movement to build one united house on one solid foundation. Bishop O'Connell said a beautiful mass. I think it was evident that he was very um, vigorous in his pro-life stance and his wishes to spread that through our Catholic congregation and, and beyond. I'm very happy to be here uh, help to the people uh, understand that life is like no matter what. You have to respect and you have to love it. I personally lost a baby and um, wasn't blessed to have another baby. And um, it's all the more reason why I feel so strongly about it. Very strong. So I pray with all our heart we can be effective and help make a difference in this world. We're fighting for the 2020. It's called the Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act. It's already passed in 17 states in this country. And it's to make people aware that babies in the womb do feel pain. That's the whole message. I'm here today because the doctors told my mom to abort my brother because he was going to have problems when he was born. But my mom didn't abort him, and now he's perfectly fine. In abortion, there's nothing healthy about it. No one could tell me that. 20 years ago, I took that stand because I believed in the lie. No more lies. We have to stand up, no matter how much it hurts. But once you have God's mercy, he, gave, he gives you the capacity to be able to stand and reach out to other people. They're in silence. As I walk through the crowd and come here, a lot of people in silence told me the same thing. I regret my abortion, too. Like John Paul II said, even though what took you to that place, God knows it was painful, but one day you will be a big advocate for life. I've been doing this for over 40 years. That's all I know. I've been working for this, and we're not going to give up, ever. It's now time for today's clip of the day, and it's in honor of Mrs. Brownette. A horticulturist says the average humidity in a normal office is 30%. Average humidity in her is 60%, and it kind of needs to be. What's known as the spheres is mostly an office space for Amazon employees. That's Amazon, the interest company, not the rainforest. Although, by looking at this, it has 40,000 plants and 400 different species held together by millions of pounds of steel, concrete, and glass. A place where you could discuss a career and plant growth, for, uh, forage for new ideas, solve problems with good reason, see how many meanings can, can you jungle. <laughs> oh, what? And that's today's clip of the day. Well, that will do it for us today. Thanks for watching this edition of St. Rose Live. I am Dan. And I am Alec. <laughs> Have a great day here at St. Rose. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Thank you and God bless. It's going to be a great Thursday. <laughs>